philosophy. What is and what is not true? Those who know themselves being better every single day. Hey there, welcome once again to the Think Grow podcast, where personal development meets real life. I'm your host, Ruben Chavez, and today I want to talk a little bit about perfectionism. This is a topic I've been thinking about now for for a while, and recently I've been approaching it from a variety of different angles. I think what got me started recently was a part in Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly. I picked it up recently and was reading the part about perfectionism. And it just really struck a chord with me. And it kind of brought me to my knees in a sense. Brene Brown, she she links perfectionism to feelings of shame. And it's, in her view, a guard that she says people use or like a shield that people use in order to prevent the world from seeing who they really are in order to prevent themselves from failing or looking stupid in front of people, in essence, to avoid feelings of disconnection and to avoid feeling like they don't belong or that they're not accepted. And so it's kind of a defense mechanism in in a sense. And as sad as that sounds, that does ring true for me. And it was really difficult to admit because I've always prided myself on my perfectionism to a degree. You know, I was always under the assumption that it was a good thing, that I was paying very close attention to details that other people missed. And yeah, it took me a lot longer to do my work. And yes, you know, I was more anxious when doing my work. And yeah, I didn't share as many things as other people and didn't create as much as other people. But, you know, this is all a price that I paid for doing work really well and doing my my work at a level that other people didn't. But these were really not true. These were, were excuses for putting myself out there more. And I'm not out of the woods, I don't think. I'm, I'm kind of still knee deep in, in working through this issue, I think. But I just wanted to make a podcast that was, that kind of expressed where I'm at right now. And I wanted to read you a blog post that I wrote about this that kind of distinguishes perfectionism from striving for excellence, because I think that's a really important point. A lot of the times when I've spoken about perfectionism in in the past or written about it on my blog or on my Instagram page, people would come back with comments like, hey, I'm a perfectionist, but that's not a bad thing. I'm actually, I always want to do better and I always want to improve. And that's actually a good point. Those two are not the same things because perfectionism essentially at its core is about external approval and striving for excellence at its core is about intrinsic motivation and and self-improvement. So I'm going to read you a blog post here in just a moment, that I wrote that distinguishes perfectionism from striving for excellence. And it's largely based on Brene Brown's writing around perfectionism in in her book, Daring Greatly. But I I just wanted to say before I, I get into that, that the reason that identifying perfectionism as a problem in my life, the, the reason it has been really helpful and revelatory for me is because it's not because perfectionism itself is such a deep issue. In fact, it may seem somewhat trivial to to many of you, but it's because it's connected to much deeper and consequential issues, issues that are related to vulnerability and shame and acceptance and belonging, and most importantly, courage. In fact, I initially picked up Brene Brown's book because I'm trying to put together a course of sorts, mostly for myself, but eventually I want to export it to to everyone, you know, who's a Think Grow Prosper listener and, and subscriber, a course related to courage, to the development of that character trait, because I feel it is at the heart of a lot of the things that we care about, most of the things that we care about. 
But anyway, I was stopped in my tracks because <laughs> it turns out also that courage is a crucial part of facing one's shame of being vulnerable, which is really the jumping off point for true connection and true self-worth. I'm getting off track here, but my point is that this is a an important issue for me and it's connected to a larger set of issues that I care about that I'll be talking about here shortly. I want to take a brief moment to talk about one of our sponsors for this show, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in pretty much any field you can think of. Writing, photography, uh, cooking, even social media marketing, just to name a few. One of the many reasons that I love and promote Skillshare is because their core values of learning and growing are very much in alignment with my own and I'm sure if you're listening to this with yours too. I'll tell you about one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken with Skillshare. It was a productivity masterclass and it was all about creating systems in your life and business. And it was taught by this pretty well-known YouTuber and it completely changed how Vanessa and I run our business. It helped give us our time back by helping us to create systems that streamlined and organized our content creation and our editorial calendar for Think Grow Prosper. Massively, massively helpful. And here's the cool news. Right now, Skillshare is offering listeners of the Think Grow podcast two months free so you can try it out for yourself. Go to Skillshare.com slash Think Grow. You'll get unlimited access to 25 thousand classes for a full two months at no cost. So it's basically a risk-free situation here. The specific URL that you want to visit for this offer is skillshare.com slash think grow. Check it out. Join the millions of other students who are learning and growing with Skillshare. I've used it for a while. I love it. I think you will too. Again, that URL is skillshare.com slash think grow. And now back to the show. I wanted to read you this blog post I wrote that delineates the differences between perfectionism, which is unhealthy in all its forms, and striving for excellence, which is healthy in all of its forms. So here it is. Hope you enjoy. For most of my life, I've prided myself on my perfectionism. When people would tell me I was a perfectionist, I would take it as a compliment. What I didn't realize was that it's actually the thing that's kept me from reaching my full potential. Here are just a few of the ways perfectionism has held me back. It has kept me from starting new projects. It's caused me to not share what I'm learning with others until my knowledge on the subject is at a master level. It has hindered my enjoyment of the creation process. It has kept me from posting useful content on social media. It's held me back from cultivating relationships because I'm always waiting to become a better version of myself before I put myself out there. Essentially, it has kept me from sharing more of myself with the world. Perfectionism versus striving for excellence. It's easy to confuse perfectionism with striving for excellence, but they are not the same thing at all. In fact, these traits are diametrically opposed. Striving for excellence is a virtue. Perfectionism is a vice. It's taken me about five years, but I think I've finally internalized this distinction at the level of my nervous system. Perfectionism is fueled by external validation, the desire to gain the approval of others. Striving for excellence is fueled by intrinsic motivation, the desire for self-improvement and personal growth. Perfectionism is rooted in the belief that If I'm good enough, I'll be accepted and loved. Striving for excellence is rooted in the belief that my accomplishments don't define me. I derive fulfillment from the process of pursuing what is meaningful to me. The perfectionist views mistakes as personal defects. The striver for excellence views mistakes as opportunities to learn and try harder. Perfectionism is the result of too much of our identity being tied to achieving external outcomes. Striving for excellence, on the other hand, is the result of our identity being tied to engaging in the process of achievement with integrity. 
Perfectionism is a form of fear, fear of failing, fear of what other people think, fear of not being good enough, fear of not being loved as a result of not being good enough. Striving for excellence is a form of courage. It involves taking action toward worthwhile goals in spite of the judgments and opinions of others. Perfectionism is a form of overprotection. It's an attempt to shield oneself from criticism and judgment by making no mistakes. Paradoxically, this makes the perfectionist more fragile and less capable of dealing with judgment and criticism in the future. Striving for excellence, on the other hand, is a form of courage. It involves persisting in the face of criticism. The striver for excellence is resilient and anti-fragile because he or she uses criticism and feedback to grow and improve. Perfectionism is a vicious circle. The perfectionist attributes judgment and criticism to imperfect execution rather than viewing it as an inevitability of life. This results in attempts to be even more perfect in order to gain approval. Striving for excellence has no such feedback loop. In short, perfectionism is a vice that often masquerades as a virtue. Just as there is no degree of cowardice that's desirable, there's no amount of perfectionism that's good. As ultra-social creatures, we're always assessing how other people are perceiving us. This is a normal and healthy evolved adaptation to our social environment, but only up to a point. When it starts to corrode our happiness, our creativity, and our internal compass, it has gone too far and must be put in check. Hey, thanks for listening. You can find the show notes for this episode and all other episodes on my website at thinkgrowprosper.com slash podcast. That's where I put all the links and resources mentioned in each episode. It's also where I put the outlines of topics covered, which is a really good way to refer back to episodes in the future. Lastly, if you enjoyed this episode, I'd love to hear about it. Feel free to leave a review on iTunes with your biggest takeaway. I make it a point to read all the reviews. You can also screenshot this episode and share it to your social media along with something you learned or found interesting. And tag me in your post because I'd love to see what you found interesting. Say hi and thank you for your support.